Good morning, Harmony Grove. Glad you are with us this morning. Um, we have two services here during the week. Well, we have Sunday school, we have church, and then we have our Wednesday night program. So I invite you back. Um, we have a slight update on Wednesday nights. Um, Awana Little Explorers still meeting downstairs. So kids, you're in the same spot. If you're coming for prayer meeting this week, we're going to try something for the next uh, month or two. We're going to have prayer meeting across the underpass in the office area. Um, just seems like it's a little less to heat that area than to heat all this for Wednesday night. I'm not sure if you heard, gas prices are high. And from what I hear, they're just getting worse. Um, so we're going to try... Um, seeing if that will work over there for the next couple months. Um, so Wednesday night, come on back for prayer meeting. But if you uh, are coming, join us on in the office area, and that's where we'll begin. A couple of things to update us on. Um, one, um, we continue to go up and up in our faith promise. Uh, again, faith promise is how we set our missions budget. It's giving that we ask you to do above and beyond. Um, the idea is to give by faith and and kind of let us know what the Lord, how the Lord's leading you. Um, fill out the little slip. You can put it in one of our two giving stations, and the side are in the back. Um, we have a few more weeks to get those in. Um, we jumped from just over three thousand to almost twelve thousand, so we had a really nice jump last uh, last week. Um, we could use a couple more nice jumps like that as we go on. So please be putting those in the giving stations. Um, new to the bulletin this week, um, we're going to be doing something called, uh, f through Grief Share, called Surviving the Holidays. Um, starts uh, in a couple weeks on November 3rd. Um, Grief Share is a ministry uh, specifically geared to those who have lost a loved one, uh, a parent, a spouse, a child, something along those lines. No Thanksgiving and Christmas are speci specifically hard um, uh, in those times, so um, Grief Share is here to help. Dave Gable, right back there, give me a little wave. There we go. So you have any questions, you can see Dave and the rest of your details are in the bulletin. Finally, we have a, a table as you go out to the back to your right. Um, it says Food Drive. Um, New Hope Ministries here in Dover has asked the churches to, to help with their holiday feeding. Um, here in Dover, they are going to feed about 500 families for Thanksgiving. Um, so there's a great need, and they've asked us to help. Um, so the, the table in the back is set up specifically for, for things um, around the Thanksgiving meal. Um, you can bring in canned goods that are still good, non-expired, um, through uh, Sunday the 6th. Um, and then the next day, the 7th, I'll run those over to New Hope. Um, so again, if you have food, you can just bring it in, um, and we can contribute to the need here in Dover. Everything else is in the bulletin, so we're going to have Charlotte pray, and we'll begin singing in a moment. Thank you for this day that we can come and worship you. Lord, we just pray that you will meet us here this morning, that you will open our hearts in a way that maybe you've never done before for us, Lord that we could hear you through the worship, that we'd see you through your word in a powerful way. And Lord, I just pray that you would show us today what you want us to see it, so that we can go out and serve you and follow you in a powerful way this week, that we will see the opportunities that you place in before us and that we would walk through those opportunities to better um, aid your kingdom and, and help bring people to you. And we just thank you so much for this time. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Please stand as we begin in worship this morning.
next one is a new one this morning called Goodness of God. We're slowly trying to work on some new ones, so don't be surprised as we slowly start to introduce some of them. So, Goodness of God. true the goodness of God Psalm 145 verse 3 says great is the Lord and most worthy of praise his greatness no one can fathom one generation commends your works to another they tell of your mighty acts they speak of the glorious splendor of your majesty and I will meditate on your wonderful works
We are obsessed, curious, distracted, and fixated. Like an accident on the side of the road, we can't look away. Something or someone has our attention. We are followers, and we are all following something. Sports teams, political candidates, natural disasters, breaking news, financial markets, technology trends, famous people. The list never ends. What is your curious obsession? Who or what are you following? Is Jesus on your list? Does he turn in and out of your thoughts? Is he a consideration of who you are and what you do? He should be. Let your heart catch fire with what it means to be a Jesus follower. Your life will never be the same. Begins, we're all following something. Now, if I were to ask you to raise your hands if you were a Jesus follower this morning, I would imagine most of you would readily raise your hand and say, I follow after the things of the Lord. And yet, when we leave the sanctuary, when we go home, it becomes easy to give our hearts to lesser things. I mean, after all, it is playoff baseball season, and the big game is on, and we have sports, 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 sports. Or, maybe the thing you follow isn't sports, but it's politics. I mean, we do have elections coming up in a few weeks after all. What a wonderful time of the year. I made this joke previously, and I'll make it again a couple of times before the series ends. You know, I wonder if the Founding Fathers put the elections in November because they knew we need Christmas to cheer up from the political season. like, hey, that is actually a good idea, wasn't it? Right? It's easy to give our hearts and be fixated on things of the economy. It's like, isn't it fun to play that daily ga game? How much does gas cost today? Well, just you wait. It's coming. But we're followers, we're fixated, we're obsessed, and it's easy to follow after the things of the world and give our hearts to lesser things than to follow after the things of the Lord. Once we leave this building, it's easy to follow the physical as opposed to entune our hearts with the spiritual. So we ask ourselves, are you a follower of Jesus or fixated on lesser things? We're going to look at this morning how Jesus is freedom from following after the things of the world. So let's pray, and we'll get into our Bible study this morning. Father, God, we are prone to wander. We are prone to leave the God we love. God, we, we desire to know you. It's why we're here. We, we open our hearts to hear from you. Lord, we desire and we seek the freedom that you offer, and yet, Father, we follow after the wrong things. So, God, help us to deny ourselves, to take up our cross, to follow after the things of the Lord. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. We're going to be in... Actually, that's wrong. We're going to be in Luke 9.23. It's my own slide, and it's wrong. Turn to Luke 9.23 this morning. I think the page number is right. 595 to 596 is right. That's the Mark passage of the same thing. If you go to Mark 8.22... You'll hear the same words roughly, but I want to read it out of Luke 9.23. Are you confused yet? Good. Luke 9.23. Man, that's... I don't preach for two weeks and everything falls apart, right? Luke 9.23. Again, that's on the bottom corner of 595 it says Jesus says to them all if anyone desires to come after me let him deny himself take up his cross daily and follow after me for whoever desires to save his life will lose it but whoever loses his life for my sake will save it will profit a man if he gains the whole world and himself is destroyed or lost 
For whoever is ashamed of me and my words, of him the Son of Man will be ashamed when he comes in his own glory and his Father's and of the holy angels. But I tell you the truth, truly, some of you are standing here who should not taste death till you see the kingdom of God. I mentioned a moment ago, I haven't preached in two weeks. It was great having missions conference. It was great hearing from the Conrads last week. Um, we were in a series called Jesus Is, um, kind of Jesus Is fill in the blank. A few weeks ago we talked about how Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. The only way to God is through Jesus. You're with me. Two, uh, a few weeks ago, um, before Missions Conference, we talked about the church and how Jesus is the hope of the church. Jesus says, I will build my church. And not even the gates of hell should stand against it. Like two forces coming together that the church should smash the things of the devil. Today, Jesus is freedom from the things of the world. So Jesus, in verse 923, says to them all. So Jesus is looking at his disciples, the people who gave their lives, the people who followed after Jesus. Jesus isn't talking to the crowd. Jesus isn't talking to the casual. Jesus is talking to the committed. Jesus is talking to the Sunday morning folk who got up early, who dressed, and who came, and who want to follow after the things of the Lord. Can I get an amen? So this is who Jesus is talking to. Jesus is talking to people like you who want to follow him, who want to know him, who want to just not know him in name, but know him in action and in deed. And Jesus says in 9.23 um, that if you want to come after me, if you want to know Jesus, you must do two things. You must deny oneself, must take up your cross, and follow after me. Right? So Jesus says to the disciples, amazingly even Judas, so not everyone's going to get it, but if you want to come after me, Jesus says, if you want to come after me, you don't, it's not about simply praying a prayer. It's not about raising your hand. But Jesus says, if you want to come after me, if you want to really know me, you must, what does it say in your, you must deny yourself. Right? You must, actually, before I get to that, you must deny yourself. The idea of deny yourself is to surrender. That Jesus is the one who sits on the throne of your heart. That Jesus is the one who has control. We looked at missions conference. That discipleship is Jesus would live your life if he would, were you. That not just for an hour a week, but in every way, in all things, that you would follow after the things of the Lord. So Jesus is surrender. And by the way, we have a problem with the idea of surrender. We have a problem with the idea of putting Jesus on the throne or following Jesus as some would say your Lord or your leader as well as your Savior. Why? Because we're distracted. We give our hearts to lesser things. For example, we have a problem. This, why does this world have a problem, have such a hard time with addiction? It's easy for us to give our hearts to give the throne of our life to lesser things. These are just some of the things that our world struggles with. 10% of U.S. adults have a drug use disorder. 10% also have a pornography addiction. 10% have a social media addiction. How many of you think that number is actually a little bit low? Depends on your age, right? Bray Berkheimer here, here, he's like, no, I don't even go on the computer. So, like, of course I don't. Eight and a half smoking, 6.3 alcohol, six gambling, five food. And if you look at those numbers, they add up to well over 50%. So if you divide it down the middle, y'all are fine, y'all have problems. Or flip it around. Flip it around. Well, you're in the outer section. You might be fine too. Who knows? The real number is less than 50%. Why? Because we all know people who smoke, drink, and gamble, and they have problems with all three. Nod your head if you know those people. 
This is a surrender issue. So instead of denying yourself and letting Christ sit on the throne of your heart, it's easy to walk out the doors of this building and to give your heart to lesser things. And Jesus says, if you want to come after me, you must deny yourself. You must give up the throne of your heart. You must allow Jesus to be your leader and not let other things, lesser things, sit on the throne of your heart. And what happens is Jesus is freedom from the things of this world, from these lesser things. Nod your head if you've ever had known someone in your life who's had one of these addictions. Nod your head if you know, some, know people in your life who have all these addictions. What happens? When someone gets bad enough down the road, right? Let's just take alcohol. It might be the easiest one, or drugs. We say, hey, you have a drug addiction. Why don't you go to rehab and figure that out? Nod your head if you've known someone in your family, in your life, who's been to rehab at least once. I, I, I grew up in Philadelphia. We have some crazy things in Philadelphia, as you can imagine. Again, right in the heart of the city. My, my neighborhood was one of the worst sections of Philadelphia at the time. And I always liked when I had to walk to the subway because there was the crack house on one end of the block and then the halfway house was on the under, other end of the block. And I was like, you know what? You might want to clean up the whole block before you put a halfway house there. We digress. Why? Because it's so easier to, give, to, to fall off to give your hearts a lesser thing. Right? And what I mean by this is how we fight matters. So someone has an addiction. What do we do? We tell, we tell them, you know what? Go to rehab. Straighten yourself up. We have this rocky mentality. doesn't matter how many times you get knocked down, but when you get knocked down, you got to get back up and you got to keep going. And so often we preach this, hey, you have the tools within yourself you just got to figure out the right formula. Got to figure out the right balance of counseling and, and self-will and preservation. Right? We manipulate ourselves, right? I'm going to get my life right this time for my kids. Or, you know what, I got to get my life right for my, for my job. Or I got to do it for this or for this or for this. And how we fight matters. Because we say if, we, if you're just strong enough, if you just have enough self-will power, you can do it on your own. Nod your head if you've heard that before. And here's the truth. On your own, you can't. And I'll prove it to you. Right? Think about it this way. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And he created the Garden of Eden, and he put Adam and Eve in there. Nod your head if you've heard this story before. And Adam and Eve had two jobs. Right? Right? One, they were supposed to keep the garden. And of all the things in paradise, there was one tree that they couldn't eat of. They could eat of everything they wanted, except the one in the middle. And how long did it take them by themselves to eat of the one in the middle? Not very long, right? One conversation with the devil... And everything is flipped upside down forever. So given their own strength, how long did Adam and Eve last among the things of this world? And the sad truth is, not long. Right? How we fight matters. Jesus is freedom. How is Jesus freedom? Well, think of it this way. Romans 12, 1, some of you know this verse. Therefore, I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as living sacrifices, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true and proper worship. Nod your head if you know this verse, maybe not in this translation, but in a similar translation. That our job is to offer our bodies as living sacrifices, to put Jesus on the throne. To deny ourselves, to take up our cross and follow after him. Nod your head if you're with me. I, I, I got a lot of head nodding today. Some of you look like you need a little, like, you know, maybe, maybe you nod your head, you're, you're, you're doing this a little bit, right? That's okay. I'm just trying to help you out. It's a little warm in here. I got to work double time today. 
So to offer your bodies, how we fight matters. Who are you offering your body to? Like, is it the Jesus? No, Jesus has a body. Is it the God? He, no, he's, he's on the throne. You offer your bodies to the Holy Spirit, that when you receive Christ, God lives in you. You are sealed with this ho your Holy Spirit, that God changes you and transforms you from the inside out. Right? So we surrender not based on how well we do, but how well we yield and allow God to fight for us. I mean, Jesus says, come to me, all you who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon me. It is gentle and lowly. My burden is light. Right? Jesus is freedom. Right? We have to surrender and chase after the things of Jesus and not give our hearts to lesser things. So if you want to come after Jesus, deny yourself, take up your cross daily, and follow after him. So take up your cross. There's no mistake on what side you're on. Right? I love the word daily there. And this is why I read it from Luke and not from Mark. Mark doesn't have the word daily. Um, but Jesus says, take up your cross daily and follow after him. So when you surrender your life to Jesus, sometimes God gives you victory almost immediately. Nod your head is when you came to Christ, God gave you victory of some sin in your life. That you no longer had the urge to curse anymore. You no longer had the urge to smoke or, or whatever it is. Nod your head is God gave you an immediate victory in your life. A bunch of you are nodding your head. And sometimes God is gracious that way. And sometimes God removes the sin and removes the temptation like that. And if that hasn't happened to you, I'm sure you've heard of other people that has happened to. And yet sometimes that victory takes some work on our part. Love how Mark Batterson says it. Look, we can't earn our way to heaven, but sometimes God isn't opposed to our hard work. That's why when the person was blind, he sends the blind man across the city to the pool of Bethesda before he's healed. Paul, in the New Testament, talks about having a thorn in his flesh. Nod your head if you know what I'm talking about. Right? Even Paul says, look, I want victory, but man, there's this idea of surrender, that God has not taken this away from me yet. And sometimes it's this obedience in our life that God moves through our obedience and gives us the victory we seek. How we fight matters. Look, we're fighting a spiritual battle. We don't fight it in our flesh. We fight it with our spirit. Jesus is victory from the lesser things of the world. So take up your cross daily. Identify, allow Jesus to sit on the throne. Allow Jesus to be the leader of your life. Think of it this way. How would your life be different if you carried a 12-foot cross around with you this week? Some of you says that sounds heavy. That sounds like my arthritis would act up. Well, we'll make it a blow-up one, right? We'll make it like two pounds. We can all deal with that. But let's say you, you had to carry a 12-foot cross around with you this week. How would your life be different? You had to go out from here. You load it up in your car. You set it down next to you at the table at your workstation. You bring it to, with you to your grandson's basketball game. If you were carrying a 12-foot cross around with you this week, I guarantee you two things would happen. One, people would go, what is that for? You'd be asked about it. And two, there would be no hiding what you're carrying around. True, right? Sometimes it's easy to give our hearts to lesser things, because we go out of this sanctuary, and it's easy to hide our faith, to set it aside for a week. And we end up not talking about Jesus till we come back here on Sunday morning. And the idea of surrender is that when we leave this place, that Jesus sits on the throne, 
that Jesus is our Lord. And it's not something we put aside, but it's something we carry with us. So as we go about our week, as we talk about the Phillies' amazing win yesterday, or as you talk about your grandkids, um, I'm working that, aren't I? Are you, your grandkids' grades, or, or so on and so forth, the things of God should come up in our life. And it's so easy to talk about everything else. I mean, we can all complain about gas prices, can't we? But we're all going to buy gas. Right? If you want to come after Jesus, deny yourself, in all ways identify with the things of the Lord, and follow after him. Jesus then gives us a, an illustration the next two verses. For whoever desires to save his life will lose it, but whoever loses his life for my sake will save it. What profit a man if he gains the whole world? Self is destroyed or lost. So moving forward, you know, as we leave in a few minutes, what are we living for this week? If we're fixated on lesser things and we're chasing the things of the world, um, we can desire to save our life, but ultimately we're going to lose it. It's so easy to get lost in the next experience. It's so easy to get lost in the next promotion. It's so easy to get lost in the next big thing. We end up scrolling our life away. We end up giving our hearts to lesser things. We end up looking back and go, hey, where did the time go? Or what did I give my heart to? Jesus is freedom. That when we focus on the things of God, the things of this world come into a lot better view. So we deny ourselves. We take up our cross. We follow after him. So many people will live this world to try to win the things of this world. And if we live this world to try to win the things of this world, what profit, what is the end of man if he gains the whole world. I wonder if some people are going to get to heaven and God, and they're going to say to God, but God, don't you know who I am? But God, don't you know how many touchdown passes I threw? But God, don't you know how large my bank account is? But God, you know how many people followed me on Instagram? Or if I walked down the street, they would recognize me? I mean, we've never lived in a time in the history of the world where it's easy to be famous. And by the way, it's easy to be famous for some of the silliest things imaginable. You know, what profit in the end when we stand before God, what good is it if you gain the whole world? If everybody knows your name, or everyone desires your bank account, or everyone lusts after the things you have. But himself is destroyed or lost. And these are the people we idolize. And these are the people we chase after. And we say, hey, my life would be so much better if I were just like so and so. And so many of us live even lesser lives than them. Hey, you know what? My life would be so much better if I had a new car. Or if I could go on that next vacation. Or if I could just get the 127th item in this collection, then everything would be complete, and there would be balance, and I would have harmony and unity in my life. Oh, you're shaking your heads, but come on now. Some of you know those people. I just need that last piece. And what happens is these things give us this momentary satisfaction, right? This glimpse and those glimpses turn our hearts from the things of God. And we end up wanting the, the stuff instead of wanting the Savior. And Jesus says, look, if you want to come after me, deny yourself. It's surrender. It's allow me to sit on the throne of your heart. If you chase the things of this world, you're going to look back and realize for all of eternity, I could have done more with what God has given me. That's a crazy thought, isn't it? Look, God formed you. God loves you. God has placed you here with an eternal purpose.
purpose. You are fearfully and wonderfully made, and the creator and the savior of the universe has plans for you. Why do we give our hearts to lesser things? It's crazy, isn't it? And God's like, I want you to have this eternal perspective. <clears throat> you chase after the things of this world, you know, your eternity, I wonder if you're just going to be wanting. I love how Mark adds this. Or what can a man give in exchange for his soul? Two ways you can think of this. Um, some translations might actually have that word exchange as barter. What can a man barter for his soul? I wonder if some people are going to get to heaven and God go, God, but you know how much money I have? How much do you want? Five million? Ten? Let me in. And I wonder if God could look at it and go, you're going to pay me in gold? We have plenty of pavement up here. Your money is no good. Your fame is no good. Your collections are no good. There's no cheat codes. There's no back doors. There's no other way. Jesus is the way. And this is why you have to surrender your heart to the things of God. And maybe you hear this, and maybe you have the struggle going on in your heart right now, and you've never given your life to Jesus. As you sit, bow your head, pray, deny yourself, trust in Jesus as your Lord and Savior. You know, there's no magic prayers. It's, it's, an, it's an act of faith. In your own words, in your own heart, pray, receive Christ's forgiveness in your life. What can a man give in exchange for his soul? Look, life is hard, isn't it? And there's no second chances, right? We get one shot at this thing. You get 60, 70, 80. We've got someone here who's over 90 today. But God still has you here. God still has a purpose for you. And sometimes it's easy to look back and go, but God, I've blown it. God, I've missed it. God, I've done all these things. And God's saying, yeah, yeah, yeah. I want to forgive that, but I'm going to give you another chance. If you are breathing today, God has given you another chance. Yield, surrender your heart to the things of God. What profit a man, verse 25, gains the whole world Himself is destroyed or lost. For whoever is ashamed of me and my words, of him the Son of Man will be ashamed when he comes in his glory, and his fathers, and that of the holy angels. But I tell you truly that some of you standing here shall not taste death till they see the kingdom of God. We're going to take these verses in reverse. We talked about a few weeks ago um, that the purpose of the church isn't just so you get to heaven, but the purpose of the church is that you get to experience a little bit of heaven here on earth. We said the Lord's Prayer. Um, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on as it is in heaven. Right? Some of you here will taste a little bit of heaven, right, some of you, verse 27, but I say some of you standing here shall surely taste, not taste death until they see the kingdom of God, until you taste a little bit of heaven here on earth, that you deny yourself, that you give your hearts to the things of God. You're part of the church and you see God move in undeniable ways. That's God's promise to you. That if you surrender, if you're all in, you're going to see God move in ways you've never seen God move. And you're not going to die until you taste a little bit of heaven here on earth. Someone give me an amen. I mean, that's not what our hearts long for, isn't it? Isn't that what you desire deep down in your spirit, in your soul? God, I'm here for more than these 80 years. God, I'm here for this eternal purpose. God, I want to see you move. God, I want to see you alive and well in my life. God, I want to be used by you. Like, oh my God, like you can almost like, I, 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 I can almost like feel God wanting to move among our church. Like how do we get to that point where the church just becomes a blaze and on fire again? It becomes with our hearts, right? God has put us here to revive this church. 
Deny yourself. Take up your cross. Follow after God. Jesus is surrender. He gives you freedom from the things of this world that we can yearn and know the things of God. Amen? Verse 26 is the opposite. Verse 26 is, is the reminder that what we do here on earth sets us up for all of eternity. For whoever is ashamed of me and my words, of him the Son of Man will be ashamed when he comes in his glory. That at some point either Jesus is going to come and take us home, or at some point we're going to breathe our last and go to Jesus. But this is the opening act for all of eternity for all of us. And someday we're all going to stand before God and give an account. And Jesus is saying, how you live here is going to matter what happens there. And some of you don't want to deny yourself. Don't, some of you don't want to take up your cross. Some of you don't want to surrender. What happens is, if you're carrying around a 12-foot cross, there's no opportunity to be ashamed. Like, you can't hide that. Well, what's that you're carrying around? Oh, this? This is nothing. Let me just put it behind here and, and put it in my pocket and try to do away with it for another week. And what happens is we, we sometimes become accustomed to living unashamed in here and ashamed out there. That we can sing and we can speak boldly in here, and yet we get really quiet when we go out there. And this is the eternal reminder. Look, Jesus is surrender, that he wants to sit on the throne of your heart. That he has a plan for you and a purpose for your life. And if you're ashamed of that, you're never going to see God fully work in you. You're always going to doubt. You're always going to second guess. You're always going to be hesitant. And you're never going to experience the fullness of God as he wants in your life. And man, I want that for you. Man, I want it for me too, but I want it for you as well. Like, you know what I'm saying? Jesus is surrender. He gives us freedom from the things of this world. It's giving you a lot to think about. Um, as we close, got these two closing thoughts. One, are you a Jesus follower or are you fixated on lesser things? You know, do you give your heart and give your thought and give your life to the things of this world? And there's so many of them, right? You can spend more time on cable news than you can be than you do in your in fellowship with God or, or with your sports team, with your collection, or with your job. You know, it's easy as we leave to leave here as a follower and go and become fixated on the things of this world. So, the final question is: What do you need to surrender to Jesus today? Let's say you really want to follow after the things of God. Let's say you want to deny yourself. Let's say you want to surrender. Let's say you hear this thing and you just, you want that excitement. You want that life. And you know there's that one thing holding you up. That this thing has too big a hold of your heart. I want you to yield that to Christ today. I want you to confess it. Give it a name. God, I spend too much time on Facebook. Lord, you know, I spend too much time worrying about my debt. God, I, I, I spend too much time working when I should be communing. God, I, you know, my kids are my everything. And Lord, I, I need to yield that area of my life to you. And if God is giving you something, write that down. That is where God wants you to start. And in God's spirit, ask for God's help. Lord, last week I spent too much time on these websites, Lord, and I want this week to be different. Lord, give me your spirit. Father, I yield this to you. Look, we are the church. We are supposed to help one another. And some of you are going to need help with this. We have elders. We have people here who can walk with you through some of the harder things in your life. Um, but I don't want you to go through the same cycle of you're going to get knocked down. It's all about you. No, no, no. 
Jesus says, anyone come after me, deny himself, take up my burden. It is, my yoke is easy, my burden is light. I am gentle and lowly of heart. Jesus' surrender, he gives us freedom from the things of this world. What do you need freedom from today? Father, we thank you for we are fearfully and wonderfully made. Lord, we thank you for Christ who died for our sins. And not just to forget about us, Lord, but God, to give us freedom from the things of this world. Help us to yield our spirit to your spirit. Like to fight a spiritual battle with your spirit in us. God, I pray that you would just set this church ablaze, Lord. Father, that you have a plan for our lives. Lord, that everyone can reach one. Lord, that we would claim our pews. Lord, that we would see this church alive with your spirit once again. And Father, when that happens, it isn't about how smart I am or how great our elders are or how awesome this building is, but Lord, it will be because your spirit is moving in this place. Lord, that your spirit's alive in us. So help us to yield. Help us to trust in you. So then, Jesus, we ask, amen. Hey, stand as we close and sing, Take My Life and Let It Be. God, as followers of you this day, we ask that you would open our eyes to see the opportunities that you have us. Open our ears so we can hear and have compassion and grace for those around us. Lord, that you would use us anew this week. Um, that you would walk before us. And God, we would live the life that would be pleasing in your sight, the life that you would live if you were here among us. Lord, we're just simple servants. And Lord, we want to see you move in our families, in our workplaces, among our kids and our grandkids. So it's in Jesus we pray. Amen.